everyone, welcome back to the machine learning series here at Pythonist. As I told you in the previous video, we are going to build a very basic Hello World kind of machine learning model using Keras. It will help you to understand various important concepts you will need in order to understand later topics. So let's get started. So let's say we have to compute a value named z. And here we have an equation. 5x plus 6y plus 5. This equation describes that the z has some linear relationships with x and y. We are going to make the machine learning model on its own to find the best fit for this relationship given a sufficiently large number of x and y values and the corresponding target z values. Once the model is trained, we will use this model to predict the value of z for any unseen x and y values. For example, given x equals 2 and y equals 3, the model should predict an output z equals 33. In machine learning, we call this kind of problem the linear regression case study. Technically speaking, we will create a single layer network consisting of only one neuron, which is trained to solve a linear regression problem. So without a further ado, let's get started. I will explain rest of the things while coding the machine learning model. So here, I'm inside a new Jupyter notebook at Google's Colab. So first of all, we will import the required libraries. First one is the TensorFlow with the TF alias. Then we will import Keras as from TensorFlow import Keras. Next one will be NumPy with the alias as NP for supporting large multi-dimensional arrays in Python. So we will be using NumPy arrays to store the input data required by the model. Then I will import the matplotlib that pyplot as plt. The matplotlib is a Python library for creating two-dimensional plots. We will plot the accuracy and error matrices. Great, we are done with our imports. Now let's prepare the data we need to feed to train the model. So we will create a set of 1000 data points consisting of x and y coordinates. First, I will define the data points length to 1000. Now let me place the code to generate random values for x and y. There you go. You can see here we are utilizing the numpy to generate random values for both x and y. The low and high parameters in the uniform function define the lower and the upper bounds for the random number generator, which we set from minus 10 to plus 10. The size parameter specifies the dimension of the array. That is, how many values are to be generated. It will return an array consisting of 1000 rows and one column for x and y. Now, here's the equation we are trying to solve. In machine learning terminologies, x and y are the features and z is the label. Once our model is trained, we will ask the model to predict z for the given x and y values. But to align it with the real world calculation, we must have to introduce some noise in every value of z that we compute using that particular equation. So we will generate the noise by using the random function which is ranging from minus one to plus one. Now here's the updated equation. Next thing is that we have to prepare this data in a format we can feed it to the network. The input to our neural network will be a single dimensional array consisting of 1000 rows with each row consisting of another single dimensional array having x and y values as columns. So here you go. We have utilized the column underscore stack function of NumPy to achieve this thing. At this stage, our data is ready to be feeded into the network. So let's define our model. Here we are. We are utilizing the Keras sequential API. Using this API, we will be able to construct multi-level sophisticated network architectures. We will discuss these APIs in our later videos. Inside that, we can define the layers we need for the neural network. For our particular case, we only need one layer with a single neuron. 
the unit's parameter defines the dimensionality of the output space. Here, by specifying a value of 1, we define a single layer network with a single neuron outputting a single value. Now our model is ready. The next step is to compile that model. So let me paste the code here. We simply called the compile function on the model. As you can see, there are three important components we have to define the learning process of the model. The first one is the loss function. Simply speaking, the loss is the difference of the predicted values from the expected or targeted values. In machine learning models, our goal is to minimize the loss as much as possible. Keras provides several predefined loss functions. For example, categorical cross entropy, mean squared error, and Huber loss. The next one is the optimizer. It actually helps in reducing the losses. An optimizer is an algorithm used to adjust the weights and the learning of a neural network. By changing these attributes, we actually try to minimize the losses. Keras provides several predefined optimizers. To name a few, Stochastic Gradient Descent, SGD in short, RMSProp, and Atom. The last thing we defined, the metric to gauge the performance of the model. Mean square error, root mean squared error, and mean absolute error are well-known matrices used for this purpose. So here we have utilized the mean squared error as the loss function, stochastic gradient descent as the optimizer, and again, the mean squared error as the metric. Now we are ready to train our model by using the data we prepared. The model will be trained in several iterations. At the beginning, we assign some preset weights to the various nodes in the network. After the first training iteration, we look at the losses and then adjust these weights for the next iteration. We will try to minimize the losses. The process continues through several iterations. We call it epochs. At the end of each epoch, we save and monitor the losses to ensure that we are optimizing the network in the right direction. To save that particular state, we can utilize the Keras history object as the callback for the training. Let me place the code here. There you go. And here's the call to the fit method. Here we have various parameters. The first parameter specifies the stacked input that we have created earlier. The second parameter specifies the target values. The epochs parameter defines the number of iterations. The verbose parameter specifies if you want to observe the training progress. The validation underscore split parameter specifies that 20% of the given data would be used for validating the trained model. And here's the history as the callback. Now let's run the model training. There we go. You can see it's running epochs and recording the performance for each epoch. Great. We are done with the training of our model. Now, let's try to make a prediction on an unseen x and y values. To do so, we will use the predict function on the trained model. Here's the code. Here, we specify x equals 2 and y equals 3. Just execute this cell. And here we are. Now, just to check that if the prediction is close to the expected output or not, we will apply the values of x and y to the equation. Just print the result. And here we are. You can see that the model predicts very close to the expected value. Great. That's enough for this video. In the next video, we will try to understand how can we plot different visualizations to understand the training process and the model's performance. If you enjoyed the content, thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.